still on Rapid TV on Stars Time Channel 176, and this is Issues. I am Ira David Fraze. And I am Anna Christopher. On today's edition of the show, we will be looking at the Nigeria Child Rights Act. The Nigerian Child Rights Act is a pivotal piece of legislation designed to protect the rights and welfare of the children across the country. Enacted in 2003, it serves as a comprehensive framework outlining the fundamental rights and responsibilities of children, parents, guardians, and the state in ensuring their well-being and development. One of the fundamental principles of the Child Rights Act is the recognition of the inherent digni dignity and worth of every child. It upholds the right of every child to life, survival, and development, emphasizing the need for their protection from all forms of abuse, exploitation, and neglect. The act, the act covers a wide range of issues concerning children, including the rights to education, healthcare, and a safe environment. It prohibits harmful practices such as child marriage, child labor, and child trafficking, aiming to eradicate these violations and promote the hostile development of children. Furthermore, the Nigerian Child Rights Act places a strong emphasis on the participation of children in matters and affects them. It recognizes their rights to express their views freely and to have those views given due way in accordance with their age and maturity. In addition to outlining rights, the Act outlines duties and responsibilities, emphasizing the role of parents, guardians, and the state in ensuring the fulfillment of these rights. It mandates the provision of essential services and support systems to enable children to reach their full potential. On issues today, our attention will be on Nigerian Child Rights Act. On the other half of the program, we will be speaking with a legal practitioner to know how the people of Nigeria will benefit from this. Joining us are Barrister Perpetua Nkiru and Barrister Faith Osses. Two female legal practitioners. We're well, glad to have you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you so Let's much. go on a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, Barrister Perpetua, what are the key provisions of the Nigerian Child Rights Act and how do they aim to protect the rights of the, con of the children in the country? Okay. Thank you. And um, firstly, before we go ahead to discuss the rights of child, we would um, first of all define who a child is, because we'll be using the term child, 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 so that when we mention that term, you understand who and what we are talking about. Now, the Act, the Child Rights Act has provided and has defined a child as anybody below the age of 18. Now, the provisions of that Act has gone ahead to make provisions for right to life, right to a name, right to quality education, right to um, a good health care system, and so many other rights that has been listed out for the child. And the aim of this act or these laws is just to make sure that um, these persons under the age of 18 are duly provided for and um, duly covered for. That is, they have their rights to know what and what they are supposed to have just by reason of being in that age bracket. You know, oh, as I am in this age bracket, I am supposed to have this, I am entitled to this, I am entitled to that. So the Child Rights um, Act has gone ahead to make provisions to say for any child below the age of 18, that you are entitled to, to life, you have the right to quality education and the right to health, so many other rights that were listed that would come forth as we discuss further. Okay. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Ma'am, how effectively has the Nigerian Child Rights Act been implemented since its enactment? And what are the major challenges hindering its full implementation? Okay. You know, um, 
our our problem here in this country is just the issue of making laws without going ahead to make provisions for that, those laws. You know, it's just so easy to say, oh, every child is entitled to quality educations, education. Now, what steps has the government taken to make sure that, you know, there is quality education, that when a child under the age of 18 falls sick, there are basic um, health amenities for that child. And for the fact that a child is sick and you rush that child to maybe, for instance, a government hospital, and you just say, oh, attend to this child because the child is below 18. Who attends to you? Who listens to you at that point in time? They expect you to do what you're supposed to do. Oh, at that point, they ask you, oh, have you purchased the card? Um, You need to see a doctor. You need to do this. You need to do all that. You don't just take your child to any school and just say, oh, my child is below 18. Put, uh, it's his right to go to school. So put that child in that school no the government has just gone ahead to make provision to make laws and to you know outline so many rights of a child but then has not gone ahead to make provisions for those rights that they expect that child to enjoy if you're saying that every child to have should have access to education, then you should go ahead to make provisions for quality and um, studying environment, for you know having a good uh, environment where that child can study, having quality teachers on ground, having materials that will help that child to develop. And then if you're saying that child should be entitled to healthcare facilities then you should go ahead to make sure that oh there is good there are good hospitals where you can just take that child to and everything about the health of that child is taken care of so we the the government has gone ahead to just make laws without making adequate provisions to make sure that those laws that they have made are being implemented thank you okay thank you so much mommy mommy what role do government agencies ngos and other stakeholders play in ensuring the enforcement of the Child Rights Act across different regions of Nigeria? Oh, um, there are so many NGOs on ground doing one or two, but we won't leave everything for the NGOs. At some point, the government should at least cater for at least up to 50%. And then when you're not talking about the NGOs coming in to do one or two, you would now see that um, there, there is less work for the NGOs. As you mean... Um, for instance, um, we want to want to um, let's say want to erect a building, and you go ahead to make provisions for cement, for rods, for every other thing. You see that by the time the engineer comes on ground, it's so easy for the engineer to just pick those material and start up work. Mm -hmm. So it is not enough for us to for the government to just relax and say, oh, there are NGOs taking care of some of the things that we are supposed to do. Yes, there are NGOs on ground agencies doing one or two but then i still believe that the government has major role to play in making sure that these laws and these rights are being implemented thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am verse of eight please how does the nigeria child rights act address issues such as child labor child marriage and child trafficking and what measures are in place to prevent and respond to these violations? Okay, thank you so much. Um, let's start with child marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, the rights, as my colleague has rightly said, has provided for various provisions um, regarding child, children, within that age bracket, 18 below. Now, they've provided, to a large extent, I will actually say that they've actually done well, but the problem is just our culture. You know, Nigeria, we have cultures. As regarding child marriage, they provided that a child below the age of 18 is not expected to be betrothed to someone or given out in marriage. You get. So whatsoever marriage that is done at that time, it's non and void. In other words, it does not exist. So in the eyes of the law, that marriage does not exist at all. You understand? So that's it. But then the problem is, in our Nigeria, due to our cultures and the rest, some persons, they will still want to give out their gay child at marriages. So these are a lot of factors that have caused issues. As we get child labor, the law has also provided that a child should not be put in labor that is exploitative, like, you understand, carrying heavy loads, doing one of those things that will cause issues in the health, in the mental health, physical health of that child. The law has provided for it. The law has provided for child trafficking, that ch children should not be put on child trafficking. 
we've provided for those things. He has the last prevented those things. But the issue we also have is first, we have a lot of people who are poor. You understand? Our society are full of poverty. Many persons, they don't, want, they don't even have the money to take their children to school. They don't even have the money to train them. So at such, you will see parents who give their children things to work in the streets. Those are labors. You see parents who will give their children arts in marriages because they know that the person they are giving their children arts will provide for the family. You see parents who they will traffic their children at for prostitution's sake. Why? Because they need to survive. We understand that the law has provided for these things. They've said that these things have been prohibited. They've done well. But then they need measures. And that measures involve helping to alleviate people from poverty. In coming to schools, teaching these children their rights. When these persons come to your school, now that we are doing this now, there are a lot of things you are learning. True of us. Yes. True. True. So now you learn these things. When you see someone else who wants to give you things that labels that are out of your way, or better still, they are higher than your power, you will want to retaliate or talk about it. Like, this one, I cannot do this. You get So when we bring these things to our society, we teach our children, we explain these things to them, and then we also help our parents also. You know that what? Help them alleviate this poverty. Give them jobs. Government is able to provide these things for them. You will see that a lot of all these rights will be enforced. But now, nothing like that. But the law is provided for it, just as you know. So, yeah. Thank you, ma'am, for the response. Yes. Verse Faith. Yes. What are the specific rights guaranteed to children under the Nigeria Child Rights Act? And how do they align with international standards and conventions on child rights? Okay. Thank you so much. We have different rights that have been given to children. According to the Child Rights Act, you know, um, sec, um, chapter 4 of the Constitution, 1999 Constitution, as amended, chapter 4 of it provides for rights, fundamental rights of humans, generally human speaking, you understand? So we have different rights. We have the right to life. We have the freedom of association. We have the freedom of speech. We have freedom of communication, privacy, and family life. These are the rights that will also be given to children. So you as a child, you can have the right to life. You have the right to a name. You should be given a name. We cannot see you and be calling you a hey, mister. You have those rights. Child rights act has provided for those rights for children. You have the right to freedom of association. You have the right to freedom from discrimination. You should not be discriminated as a result of your upbringing, as a result of your age, as a result of your culture, your traditions. You have those rights. So the child right has, has provided for those things. And then as regarding the international convention, this child right has came as a result of this international convention that has been ongoing in the international laws. And then Nigeria now decided to domesticate it in our, in our own country. So the child right has what coined out of the international convention of um, children's rights. And then it was domesticated in Nigeria and enforced into law in 2003. So it's aligned with these rights also. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, what does the Nigeria Child Rights Act address issues related to access to education, healthcare, and social services for children, particularly in marginalized communities? Like my colleague has rightly said, the, um, the law or the right at rider has provided for a child right to education, have the right to proper education. Although the law provided for primary school, which is basic education, and the junior secondary school, and the act now also concluded that where a particular parent do not have the available resources to take that child to higher institutions, secondary and um, senior secondary school, then you can enroll such child in any trade or skill to learn those things. At least provide for the basic education of those children. But the problem is we have government school around. We have a lot of government schools that have been established, but we have less teachers. It can be way cheaper, fine, but we have less teachers. We have less basic amenities for these children. Even if the government has provided for this education, the truth is, the process has not been well completed. 
We don't have teachers who are able to provide for the basic education of those children. Sometimes these schools, they will go on a um, strike. Then you will see these students, they will be wandering around, waiting for the teachers to come back from strike. These are a lot of things that are affecting the society. Well, we understand the government are trying. Seriously speaking, we cannot really give them zero. They are doing well. But to a large extent, if we want to implement this right, regarding education, basic amenities, health, then we should be able to make it where we should be able to put the infrastructure in place so that this child they can be able to assess this education properly. So when you are going to a private school, someone who is going to government school, whose parents have not been able to afford this private school, they should be able to enjoy the education as much as you are enjoying yours in private school. So government should at least do something about that. I think that is the best. Thank you, ma'am, for that. Ma'am, what are the efforts being made to raise awareness about the Nigeria Child Rights Act among children, parents, and communities? And how can these efforts be strengthened? Okay, um, there are a lot of efforts that have been made. We have the legal aid, they've done campaigns, there are a lot of programs. This one we are doing now. They are awareness we are bringing to, right, to children. There are a lot of campaigns that have been done. We have the National Human Rights Commission. Most people they do. We have um, foundations, we have NGOs. They do campaigns, they do programs. I've seen, um, even here in Abia State, I've seen some people who personally take up these things and then they come to schools and they do programs. I'm so sure you guys have done it in your school. So these are the awareness. But as much as this awareness has been put in place, if the government does not provide funds, most persons will give up. I cannot be using my phone most of the time to do this awareness and I'm not seeing results. Or better still, because of the policies of the country, it's shortlining these things and putting in place. So, for example, even if I'm putting in the best, I'm doing programs, I can only reach as much as the persons I can reach. But for us to reach the general public, we must first of all put this awareness in place in social medias. These persons, politicians, they come out and then they bring this awareness because they have more crowds. They have more power in these things. So when they bring this awareness, they also put hands in place and they make these things more public. I think it will be better. Thank you so much for that, Mama. Thank you for that, Barrister Faith. Barrister Petra, how does the Nigeria Child Rights Act address the issue of violence against children, including corporal punishment, sexual abuse, and neglect? Okay. Um, the Child Rights Act has gone ahead to make provisions for um, the um, some kind of punishment on child that is for the child, and um, um, there are some kinds of punishments that you shouldn't give to a child. You know, punishments that are extreme, and it also went ahead to make provisions for if you are being caught doing such thing to a child this is what the penalty is it also went ahead to make provisions for um, sexual harassment or abuse of a child and then um, section 31 of the um, child rights act made provision for where a child is being sexually abused and then you get to sub 2 of that 31 it makes provision that anybody who is caught to be abusing a child sexually is sentenced to life imprisonment so the law has gone, the act has gone ahead to make provisions to say, don't do this to a child, don't do this to a child, don't do this to a child. And also went further to say, if you are caught doing any of these things, this is what the punishment is, is there written in blue and white. So if, for instance, a, a, somebody, an adult or whoever is caught, you know, sexually abusing a child. You should know, you don't need a, a prophet to tell you, oh, he's going for life imprisonment for doing that. So he, the, the act has gone ahead to make provisions and punishment for, um, in, um, to make sure that um, such acts are being caught and uh, to serve as a determinant to others to say, oh, this person did this and this was the punishment meant, meant on that person. So it serves as a warning to every other person to say, oh, please stay clear. Make sure you don't get to this point. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much for that, ma'am. Ma'am. What mechanisms are in place for reporting and investigating violations of children's rights under the Nigeria Child Rights Act? 
And how come these mechanisms be improved? Well, um, there are, I wouldn't say there are any mechanism on ground. But what I would just say is that, um, you know, when we sit down and um, expect the government to do everything for mm. us, you know, at some point things get get getting bad and bad. And um, um, for instance, where you say, "Oh, um, I saw this this person abusing a child," and then instead of me to take mm-hmm. measures to protect us, I'm now waiting for, "Oh, mm-hmm. is there any policeman around? Come and take due report now, and you know, maybe bring out my phone." Just like the era where we yes. are in, uh, where oh, there is something going wrong, and instead of you to act or make sure you do anything to prevent further abuse or further um, act that is being mentored of that person. We go ahead to bring out our phone and we video what is going on. So I, I, I expect and I, I would suggest that in as much as we don't expect the government, everybody to be at the agencies yes, yeah. to be in place at every point in time, we around should, when you see something, you say something. If there's anything you can do to report, to say, oh, I saw my neighbor beating up um her housemaid in a way that is not really proper. Oh, I should take up this issue. I should report to the police. I should not wait for, oh, I'm not her mother. So let her mother come and report now. So we, I, I expect that individuals should take it upon themselves to, when they see something, they act to make sure that every child is being protected. Every child around you is being protected. Don't wait until, oh, there is a police, there is any government agency, or oh, are there people that are supposed to take care of these? Oh, let me wait until they come. Okay. No, start doing something before then. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back from the break. Barista Petra, what are some successful initiatives or programs that have been implemented to promote the rights of children in Nigeria? And what lessons can be learned from these experiences? Okay, there are um, numerous initiatives on ground. For instance, the Initiative for Children and Youth. It is an initiative with the name I A I C Y. That is initiative for children and youth. Mm-hmm. The this um 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 this um yes. body or provides or just um, promotes the provision of basic human rights, social justice for um children and young persons in Nigeria. Now, such initiative, such um a, a group now is one that should be encouraged. Now, if we have one um um initiative doing one in a particular area and uh, we have so many of them in different areas you know nigeria is vast so it's more like you're doing something in a small area and there are so many areas where you're also supposed to cover yes, so but then when there are other people as in you're doing from this point this other initiative is doing from that point that other ngo is doing from that at the end of the day you see that you make quality and good um, um, uh, progress. But then when you now leave few of them doing um, the little they can in a very large Mm -hmm. area and where there are so many problems and, you know, issues like that to handle. You see where that person is, maybe for instance, the person, this initiative now is in Lagos and there is somebody in Abia calling that um, group to say, oh, come to Abia. There's something happening in Abia. Come there. you see that it will be a bit difficult for that group to, you know, move immediately from there to bed. I mean, there is a group in Abia, an initiative of its own in Abia. We're answering whatever name is answering. is in Abia. There's another one in Imo. There's another one in Abuja. There's another one in Kaduna. You see that they, they it would, that, like, like the, the, extent rate or will I say their achievement rate would be so high because there are many but um, because there are so few and um, also the issue of funding because it takes funding to do all these things so the issue of funding too so if my suggestion or my advice is that more of these um, groups should come up to assist and not really wait for governments to do much and um, also call on individuals to to 
help in any way they can to make sure they fund some of these um, NGOs and groups to make sure that the right of every child, even down to the rurious areas, mm. is being protected. Okay, thank you for having that, ma'am. How does the Nigeria Child Rights Act address the rights of vulnerable groups of children, such as children with disabilities, orphanage children, and children living in conflict-affected areas? Okay, um, um, this um, act has gone ahead to say that um, a child should not be um, discriminated by reasons that are um, based on what as an issues of his birth, because some of these disabilities are from birth. You give birth to the person and then um, you see that that child cannot walk. It is not the making of that child that the child cannot walk. It is not the making of that child that the child is blind. It's not the making of that child that the child cannot speak. Now, this act goes ahead to protect that child, to say, oh, in as much as this child has been born this way, brought into the world this way, you shouldn't discriminate against that child. You shouldn't say, oh, um, um, I, when it's time to go to school, you say, oh, because, okay, I have four children and uh, three of them are doing well. They are okay. They don't have any disabilities. They don't have any issue. Oh, these three should be going. Why this one with disability should be at home? Now, this right goes ahead to protect that child now who is in that state, to make sure that, to, to gi give you that um, impression that this child has not committed any crime. This child is in that state, not by any making of his or her own. And so that the rights of this child now in that state should be protected. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Ma, what are the penalties for individuals or institutions found guilty of violating the provisions of the Nigeria Child Rights Act and how effective are these penalties in deterring future violations? Well, there are so many um, rights of a child that has been outlined by the Act. And uh, it has also gone ahead to make provisions to say, oh, where you betroth a child when the child is not of age, this is the punishment. When you punish a child to an extreme state, this is the punishment. Now, the reason for that, this, um, outlining this punishment or specifying them is to make sure that, um, um, others would know. Uh, you know, when also somebody is being convicted on such issues, they say, Oh, you abused the child, for instance, and you have been sentenced to life imprisonment. And of course, those within the environment sees that, Oh, Mr. A was accused of um, sexually abusing a child. And right now, as we speak, he has been convicted and he's currently at a social and social correctional center serving his jail term. Now, it gives a warning to somebody else who is around, who is who has been nurturing such, um, sure. such um, idea or such uh, motive to say, oh, it happened to Jude. So if I do something like this, this is what I get gotcha. in return. So there are so many punishments that has been outlined. And um, of course, it is there in blue, black and white. It's just that some of these punishments now are not really too strong. Not at all. Yeah, so <laughs> some of them should be, re, re, um, I don't know the right word to use, just to revisit it or, re, re, or reviewed to make sure that, oh, you know, um, what you're saying, if um, um, somebody, for instance, sells a child or whatever, that the 5, punishment 000. is uh, 5,000 5, naira yes, fine, fine and then um, five years, five years. Uh, imprisonment. Oh, the person who go ahead and pack like 20 <laughs> children and sell and say, well, let me just give you 5,000 5, for all of them. So some of these punishments needs to be reviewed so that, mm -hmm. and, you know, they increase, they let it be stricter so that when the person looks at, um, this is what I, what I get if I do this. And he sees how difficult and how tough it is. The person decides to have a rethink. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma. Um, Barrister Fate, mm -hmm. how does the Nigeria Child Rights Act address the issue of child participation in decision making processes and affect their lives? And what steps are being taken to empower children to exercise their rights? Okay, thank you so much. And this particular question is very funny, and it's it, it's easy but it's funny. Reasons being that um, in our Nigerian society, Nigerian parents 
there is no way they will allow you to take decision as a child. Uh -huh. of course. Yes. The law has stipulated that a child has the right to decide, a child has the right to do this, but the law also recognized our culture under the supervision, discipline, and control of the parents. So, you know, the Bible has stated that foolishness lies in the heart of a child. So, if the Lord decides to say, let the children take decisions for themselves, this Nigeria will turn upside down. Yes. We end up owning everywhere. So, the law understands that. So, therefore, the law now provided that. Yes, you can do this. Yes, you can do that. But it must be under the supervision of either your parent or your guardian. So, that's what the law has provided. Thank you, Mom. Ma'am, what are the current gaps or areas of weakness in the Nigeria Child Rights Act? And what recommendations will you make for strengthening its implementation and enforcement? Thank you so much. There are a lot of gaps. A lot. As I'm saying it, I'm even pained. Because the truth is, we have a lot of laws. You know, when you go to law school, you study, and then you come back, you now discover that what you studied is different from what is happening in the society. Mm. We left with not done on you that, ah, what they said is this. This is the different thing that is happening entirely. It's playing that entirely different thing. So, there are lots of issues, especially as regarding poverty. There is no way of thinking and responsible parents that want to take their child up for trafficking. Mm. There is none. There is no reasonable parent that want to send their child out to do prostitution. There is no reasonable parent that want to send their child out to work or send their children. There is none that will do that. Even the law provided that a child should not even be used as domestic help. Mm. You understand the meaning of domestic help? Taking them as made in the house. The law has provided for it. But do that happen or not? It happens. You see people who take up other people's children because the parents cannot train them. Mm. So they will have to start sharing these children around. We we'll say, okay, family A, oh yeah, take this boy. Family B, take this girl. Because they know they cannot provide for those children. So the first thing that should be put in place first or the injuries that we have now is poverty. Poverty is lurking everywhere. Like everybody right now, they want to do anything that they can. Even the parents want to survive first mm. before they can start thinking of how to take care of the children. It's a, it's, a, it's a father who has survived um, the current situation of Nigeria that will not start thinking of, okay, let me take my children to school, two of us. If you have no issue, you cannot go to school and be saying A or B. So the first thing, the first gap we have is poverty. Then the second gap we have is culture. After the country, we have what we call an emergency die code, which is the 911. No. Your parent can just give you a dirty slap and then you just go straight to this phone. And just no call 911, I have an issue. Please do that with your parents here in Nigeria. <laughs> your parents may not want to beat you. They may not want to just go with the child at arts. We see that slippers. We know be child at arts. Yeah. So we have a Nigerian culture. And that culture has been held in high esteem. So they're saying that even the child at arts is silent. So the gap we have now is our culture our mentality, our tradition. The child writers have provided that tattoo should not be drawn on children. And that tattoo includes this facial, tribal mark, and whatsoever. The art has provided that it is prohibited. But in our culture, that still continues. The child writers have provided that um, female mutilation, gender mutilation, mm. should be removed. But yet, culture still esteems those things. The child writers have provided that a female child is less than it. It should not be betrothed to someone else or to an adult or to anybody. But we do that in our society. Illiteracy is the gap we have. Culture is the gap we have. These are the lots of gap we have. And the only recommendation is, first of all, awareness. Hmm. And this awareness can be done in different ways. Yes. When I was sitting out to think about this issue, we thought of something. And that thing is, According to our civic education, you know, in our various education, our various classes, we teach civic education, right? Yes, ma'am. There should be a particular topic for this right, child rights act. It should be taught extensively, not in passing, because it can just be thrown, just as an obiter. Just take it, and then the teacher will continue with other things. But if a topic is given for child rights act, says education, they teach you these things, and then you learn it so well. When you are going at 
you will have the knowledge of it. And then conferences, then campaigns. I think there's something that I actually love about this Abia State. When you are going down this, um, what's it called, going towards CBN, yeah. there's a part under that women, Ministry of Women oh. Affairs. Yeah. There's one symbol they put there, trafficking of children. There's a way they catch that statement. When you see it, it is very catching. And when you start putting it in your head, you start reading it every single day, you will know that trafficking of children is wrong. So when you put up those signposts, and then we put up these strategies in place, fund these things. When issues arise like this, government should be able to fund these things. Then you discover that everything will go on well. Everything will go on smoothly. So I think those are the recommendations that we actually give. Exactly. Thank you so much. Ma'am, how can civil society organizations the media and great and the general public contributes to these effective implementations of Nigeria Child Rights Act and the protection of children's rights in the country. You know, in our twenty first century, in, in our own century, they say we are millennial. Okay? Oh. <laughs> then in this your Gen Z, Gen Z, everything is on social media. If I cough, now it's on social media. Mm. If I'm sick, I'll say weak. You write on your status and they put your status reports. We can actually do this in a very, very good way. We can channel it into issues like this. This is the best way we can help. If I see someone, I think to a large extent, I've seen it on social media and it has helped. I think there was a case that happened, I think in Abuja or Lagos, where a particular lawyer, a legal practitioner, was maltreating a maid that was giving in her care. Yes. That was put in her care. I think in Lagos, right? Thank you. And people recorded it. And they sent it on social media. And it went viral. That woman, she, I think, that woman, the, right now, she's going through her own um, law, punishment, or whatsoever that's been meted on her. Hmm. She's going through the procedure now. I think she, has, she was caught. Hmm. Last I heard, she was caught. She was arrested. She was arrested too. So, social media can help in that. When you see issues like this, see, if I'm a good, for example, I have a good um, social media presence, a very good one, mm. and I see issues where a child is being maltreated, or I see a particular situation where a child is being sold, but you know that this issue of child selling is still very much in place. Very active. Children, like, they just give birth to a child. The child is still very in his infant stage, and then they will sell that child. Mm. It's still very much active. So if, for example, I'm a good citizen and I see issues like that, I don't even need to have a good social media presence. All I need to do is just record it or report to the nearest authority. Why I record those things? If those people cannot do anything, those nearest authorities cannot do anything, and social social media will take up mm. the matter. With our Gen Z society, they will take up the matter. So if we can start putting these things up in, in our content, instead of doing twerking or whatsoever on our social media content, if we can start putting this quality content on social media, and then we start putting up this rights of children, start encouraging children. And we know, you children, you guys have phones that we don't even have. So mm. You have good mobile devices that you can use to read all these things. When you go online and you continuously see these things on social media, you will learn. That is how it will be done. And if it is done that way, it will help to create awareness for our society. Thank you, thank you so much for that, man. Thank you so we'll much. We'll go on a quick break. I'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Despite the noble intentions of the Nigeria Child Rights Act, challenges remain in its effective implementation and enforcement. Issues such as cultural practices, poverty, and inadequate resources pose significant obstacles to realizing its objectives fully. However, ongoing efforts by government agencies, civil societies, and organizations, and international partners are crucial in addressing these challenges and safeguarding the rights of Nigeria's children. In conclusion, the Nigeria Child Rights Act stands as a landmark legislation aimed at promoting and protecting the rights of the children by upholding the principles of dignity, equality, and participation. It serves as a crucial tool 
in ensuring the well-being and development of the nation's future generation. However, concerted efforts are needed to overcome existing barriers and ensure the Act's effective implementation for the benefit of all Nigerian children. The Child Rights Act seeks to protect the rights of the Nigerian child. It has been domesticated in 25 out of 36 states in Nigeria. We need all hands on deck to ensure that it is domesticated. The Child Rights Act seeks to protect the rights of the Nigerian child. It has been domesticated in 25 out of 36 states in Nigeria. We need all hands on deck to ensure that it is domesticated in the remaining 11 states. Is it your state highlighted in red? Become an advocate for the domestication of the CRA in your state. Thank you, Barista Petra, and thank you, Barista Faith. We are so from, we have learners from Meridian Heights International, International Schools, and happy International Children's Day. Day.